All right, welcome to the Wikipedia Weekly Network Wacky Wikipedia Trivia Night. We are about 10 minutes away from starting, so welcome to folks in the live feed, whether you're watching us on Twitter, on YouTube, or Facebook Live. Welcome. We will get started in about 10 minutes. We have as our guest Annie Roberta, the person who started the infamous but awesome Instagram Depths of Wikipedia account. So we'll be talking to her and also doing a pretty epic trivia contest related to Wikipedia. And I guarantee you it will be interesting for newcomers and old timers alike. So if you are watching us on one of the three platforms, tell us where you're watching from. Be great to see where you're coming from. And retweet and share this out to folks because we will be using Mentimeter as a way for all of you to play along on the trivia. So uh, you can look at Mentimeter to see how it works, but we will give you a link and a code to actually allow you to answer the questions in real time and keep score. It's really quite cool. So get your mobile phone ready. You can QR code scan, or you can enter in the web address menti, M E N T I dot com and go in there. In fact, I think I can actually show it to you now. So you can actually get a taste of it. So right there, if you go to menti.com and then you type in that code, you should be primed to be part of the trivia contest when we start it. It'll just kind of sit at a screen that says waiting for the contest to start. So if you want, you can actually go ahead and go to menti.com with the code 41650211. But it's also a great time to tell your folks, your friends, your fellow appreciators of Wikipedia that we'll be having a trivia contest online and it should be a lot of fun. All right, so we'll get started soon. Keep sharing the link out to your friends. All right. Welcome, folks. We'll get started soon. Welcome to the Wikipedia Weekly Wacky Wikipedia Trivia Show. We'll get started at the top of the hour. But let your folks know about it. You'll be able to play along using Mentimeter, which is just a website where you can actually answer questions in real time and keep your score. And we will be giving away a Wikipedia mug to the winner of the trivia contest. So there is actually something to be won. We'll be getting started at the top of the hour.
All right. Tell us where you're watching from. You're probably seeing us on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter. It'd be great to find out where you're watching us from. And please reshare this out to your networks. We'll be playing Wikipedia Trivia live. So you'll be able to keep score. And there is a first place coffee mug to be had at the end. All right, welcome folks. Uh, we're getting some great folks coming in. Hi, Paula. Hi, John. Hi, other folks tuning in from Southern California, coming in from Norway. Awesome. Philippines as well. It's great to see. So we are going to get started quite soon. We are going to be talking to Annie Rawerda, who runs the incredible Instagram channel, Depths of Wikipedia, and we'll also be doing some Wikipedia trivia later so that you can keep score and possibly win a Wiki Conference North America Wikipedia mug. So please do play along. It'll be fun. You'll learn something, even if you're a Wikipedia veteran. Um, welcome, Karen, from rainy Utah. Wow. We're getting everyone here, Norway, Philippines, Utah. Great to see you folks. All right. Looks like we've got a few viewers on Twitter. Welcome. Twitter is actually broadcasting video directly into a tweet now, which is pretty cool. So we're seeing some folks watch us there. A lot of us are, a lot of folks there are watching us on YouTube live. Welcome. Uh, some of you might be watching us on Facebook live. Great to see you folks there too. Wow. Kevin's watching us from sunny Dallas. Awesome. So we'll get started very soon here. All right, so welcome folks. All right, we'll be starting the show right now. Hi, folks. Welcome to Wikipedia Weekly. We are a video podcast as part of the Wikipedia community. My name is Andrew Lee, also known as User Fosetto. And welcome to a special episode as part of our annual Wiki Conference. North America. We just finished day one, and this is kind of the event at the end of the day. And the Wiki Conference North America is a um, virtual meeting of the Wikipedia editors and Wikimedia contributors across the North America area. So um, we thought this would be a great time to have the Wikipedia community that edits and creates content in Wikipedia interact with some of the more interesting folks in the public. Uh, that work also with Wikipedia. And there could be no one more interesting uh, than Annie Rowerto, who runs the 
Instagram channel, Deaths of Wikipedia, incredibly popular on Instagram, um, even more popular on TikTok. And we'd love to find out what, what got her started, what she's doing now. And as a bonus, we're going to also have a trivia contest where we'll be asking 15 questions and you can play along on your own. So if you want, you can even get a little glimpse of it right now. If you are using a computer, you can go to menti.com and enter in that code. We'll also be putting up a QR code that you can scan with your mobile later on. So don't be afraid if you're on a mobile and you don't know what to do, we'll have a QR code that you can scan as well. And we'll also put that, that code up later. Um, but before we get started and all that, let's bring in our folks who are you might have know already. So uh, Richard, hi. Hi, Richard Yusufaros, joining you from New York. Great to be at this uh, eighth annual Conference North America and exploring the, the wonderful intersection of Wikipedia and trivia. So Richard started us off uh, 2014, is that right? Yeah, 2014, With... New York Law School. Um, <laughs> so that was our first kind of US North America conclave of editors that got together and we've been doing this every year since yeah. then and obviously with covid we're doing this virtually this year great so we also have rosie stevenson goodnight who is our wikimedian of the year from 2016 hi rosie hey hi everybody rosie stevenson goodnight i edit as user rosie step and i am so glad to be here and rosie is the founder of the uh, program that we have called Women in Red, trying to bring uh, more women's biographies to Wikipedia. So welcome, Rosie. Thanks. And then last but not least, we have Annie Rowerta. Hi, Annie. Hi. Good meeting you. So uh, we are in awe of having you here. We've always wanted to meet you. We kind of see your work from afar and in great uh, admiration. Um, I think it's fair to say that your lone social media account gets more engagement with Wikipedia content than pretty much any official Wikipedia social media account. So congratulations. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, so I thought one thing we could do before we get into the trivia is just to learn a little bit more about what you have been doing with this amazing social media presence. So um, tell us again what what got you interested in this? Obviously, you've used Wikipedia as a student, or like, what got you interested in creating a dedicated account for this? So I've always liked Wikipedia. I did a lot of wiki racing growing up, and I think that's what first exposed me to the breadth of topics on Wikipedia. And then during quarantine, it was April of 2020. I was in college. I was quite bored. I was spending a lot of time on Wikipedia. And I decided to collect all my favorite snippets, articles, um, pictures on this Instagram account. And for a while, it was pretty small. It was just my friends and me being like, haha, fun fact. And then over time, over the past little bit more than a year and a half, it's grown to over 370,000 followers. Yeah. And it's like, uh, you know, one post a day, roughly, is what you're thinking of for the account? Or how often do you post? About once a day. It really depends. Yeah, and then I'm the excited we... and do a lot. Sometimes yesterday I did three. <laughs> and and the cool thing about it is if we scroll down through here, um, you just kind of it's like a roulette machine. You don't never quite know what you're gonna get, but you bring a consistent quality to it. So what what is it that makes what is it that inspires you to actually choose the articles um, or choose what the highlight? That's a really good question because <laughs> there are a lot of articles on Wikipedia that are fascinating, but that are that just really don't do well on Instagram. And mm -hmm. I think the key is that they have to be relatively short, relatively relatable. People like to share things that have an element of being like, that is so me. Um, and they also, I think people like things that are kind of emotional or funny or have to do with animals. Right, and it's it's fascinating because some of these have pictures, some of them don't. But if you mouse over these, you can see that you're consistently getting twenty thousand likes on these, which is like unheard of for mere mortals. So it's amazing to see. And some of these are just purely visual, right? I mean, what do, what are you're seeing in terms of patterns of what engages folks with what you post? That's a great question, and I I think I'm I'm always wondering that because I'm sometimes surprised by what people like. Um, some it's often unexpected, right? 
Yeah, I think people definitely like unexpected. If you click on the, um, if you scroll up, there's a like an ironing one, underwater ironing, extreme, extreme ironing. ironing. And then mm-hmm. the photo is a guy underwater. And a lot of people shared that because it's like, why would you, why would you ever do that? Right, right. And it's a, uh, there's like a whole, um, I think we've got a whole commons gallery uh, in the multimedia side of things that just shows all these different folks doing the extreme ironing in, in strange places. So I also want to encourage folks to have comments. Uh, you can comment on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and we can actually bring uh, comments up on the screen such as this. So as folks saying it gives me joy. I love random facts. And I think that's kind of the, the quirkiness of it, right? Everyone knows about Wikipedia, but to have someone curate it and to spend the time to get the best nuggets out is really valuable. I also have a lot of help because I have people oh, yeah. that will send me messages all the time saying, this is the best, best article ever. You have to read it. And so that definitely keeps me feeling inspired. Yeah. I mean, Rosie, I think it's quite a compliment that like, it doesn't get more veteran than kind of this crew here, but we're, we're constantly amazed by what comes up on this feed. Right. We are. I mean, um, we'll probably go through a few more, but I, I was doing what all Wikipedians do. I did my research before this podcast. And I'm looking through your Insta account, Annie, and I'm like just totally amazed at some of these, like, wait, I didn't know that. And <laughs> I didn't know that. And where where did you even, how did you even get to that? So real cool. I spent a lot of quarantine clicking on good see also links. <laughs> So, yeah, the C also's are yeah. like the yeah the weird connectors in Wikipedia, and, and those are those don't there are always aren't always loved by the Wikipedia community. People think that's weird. Why is it C also? I mean, like that. What's the official connection? There's a rule that you can only be in C also if it's not mentioned anywhere else in the article. <laughs> so there are a lot of like I mean it's it's like I think it's really useful to the users. People don't realize like the generative value of it. Um, the people have to play around with things. Um, For let me. I'll just say that I might be the biggest fan of C also ever. It's my favorite. See, this, this is the I user can't. feedback we need, Annie, because internally, <laughs> as Richard said, it's like super controversial. <laughs> yeah, people are like, C also is a junkyard of stuff. And I'm like, this is the this is the jewel at the bottom of the article. It's sometimes hey, a little hey. you're like, why is this related? And so then you read the entire article and you're like, oh, it's really high level. It's more of a philosophical connection. <laughs> Do you find the ones that have the articles that have a, a picture, a photo in them, that those are like more popular on your Insta account or does that even matter? Like I'm looking at the candle salad, like, you know, it doesn't get any cooler than that. <laughs> it depends on the article. I don't think across the board photos always help. Um, but often if it's a, if it's a cool picture, people like that. Yeah, I didn't mean to highlight the, the uh, Wikipedia editors hate joy, but sometimes we feel that way. So. <laughs> um, uh, also, we should not ignore the fact that Instagram and TikTok are very different, but um, it seems like you've got a huge traction on TikTok, even though it's not been a long, you know, the account hasn't been around that long, right? I started TikTok more recently, and I will say it takes longer to make a TikTok video. I can't just be lounging around. I have to actually sit up and put on, you know, like nice clothing, but it's, it's pretty fun to see what takes off and it's more unpredictable. Um, with, with some other social media, you get about roughly the same amount of likes, but with TikTok, it's super variable. Some will get 9 million, some will get 2000. And I can't really tell what's, what, how, how <laughs> things are gonna do. Jeez, 9 million. I talked about anti-Barney humor and <laughs> 9.6 million people on TikTok viewed that video or I should say it was viewed 9.6 million times um I don't really know why I couldn't have told you oh this video is going to go viral but I, it really did I think it's also because you recited the uh the 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 playground song so accurately um so this is 1.4 million likes 9 million views and that's pretty incredible to see that and then the um, the thing that's interesting about TikTok versus Instagram, right, is Instagram, you pretty much have to follow someone to kind of see their content. But TikTok has got an AI algorithm that can shoot your content to like millions of people 
within an hour or so, which is pretty amazing. People from all over the world were commenting, oh, I sang songs in elementary school that made fun of Barney too. So kind of a weird thing that people have in common that yeah. grew up in the 90s and 2000s. <laughs> I, I kind of wonder if, if the anti-Barney humor thing might be skirting our original research policy. And, you know, that's we always like, it. how could you put in like a children's song? I mean, like you have to have like a citation. You have to be like a, there has to be some anthropological paper on it. I mean, maybe there is, but I mean, this is the type of thing that sometimes also gets in trouble with Wikipedia. People don't realize that the joy that Wikipedia could bring and uh, maybe they take it a little too seriously. Yeah, maybe it's worth, you know, more pairs of eyes, but there's a shocking amount of analysis that I was finding from other sources. So it's crazy. Yeah. And before we're going to we're going to ask um, Annie to show us some of her favorite things that she's found in Wikipedia. But before we get to that, I want to make sure the folks who are watching here, make sure you share this with other Wikipedia editors that you may know or even general public. We're going to be going into the trivia section relatively soon and you can play along with Mentimeter, which is basically, you know, a web interface. So you can go in and you can answer the questions. You can see how you do keep score. And we will be giving away a wiki conference mug to the uh, top score. So there is actually a prize to be won at the end. So let your folks know uh, in your social media, in our telegram groups that we have in our Wikimedia community, you can win a mug, which we should show you on the screen if we can. Is it over here? There's our conference. And these are this is the merch that we have for the conference. But there's our wonderful wiki conference North America mug that could be yours for the top score in the trivia contest. Great. So uh, Annie, tell us a little bit about this, the cool stuff that you found. I really love how you've honed in on some of the more quirky things in the community. And I'm going to give you the, the screen there. Absolutely. Someone asked if I fix typos when I'm on Wikipedia. Definitely. I feel like I'm constantly <laughs> learning more and more about editing, but I absolutely love rephrasing and um, fixing typos and things like that. Um, hopefully, you, can you see this desire path right now? Yes. Right, so here are some of um, social media's favorites and also some of my favorites. First, Desire Path. I think it's a very human, um, like timeless mm -hmm. phenomenon where you'll take the quickest route, even if it means you're not going on the sidewalk. Another favorite, the Buttered Cat Paradox. Um, there's so much analysis about the silliest thing. It's the idea that cats land on their feet, buttered toast lands buttered side down. So what would happen if you put buttered toast on the back of a cat and you don't have to try it, you shouldn't try it because as you can probably imagine, cats have a writing reflex, whereas toast is inanimate. So the cat's gonna land on their feet, but there is there is a page about it that I think is quite funny. Um, a lot of people on the internet when I posted this were rather disturbed by the fact that you can cook salmon in the dishwasher. I tried it um, and it worked, the fish was cooked, I ate it. Um, but it does make me wonder, you know, just because we can doesn't mean that we should, but it works. I did it. I tried it. Um, I, so those are some topics that I think are funny, but there's also just some phrasing that shows the personality of Wikipedia while still being pretty much encyclopedic tone. Like this one, Goodall, whose research, or excuse me, whose research on chimpanzees spans more than 60 years. I said that dogs are her favorite animal. She is not mixing business and pleasure. Um, <laughs> next up is the Pope Mobile. This one went pretty viral. Um, in 2002, John Paul II requested that the media stop referring to the car as the Pope Mobile, saying the term was undignified. The Pope Mobile, blah, 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 blah. It continues, um, having no regard for John Paul II's uh, preferences on the terminology there. The next thing I'm going to show you is from the page on Australia Japan relations. The two countries are pretty friendly right now, but it has not always been that that way. There was some tension in the early stage of the relationship, such as World War II, just a, you know, a little a little wrinkle in their relationship. <laughs> the phrasing makes it sound like just a little <laughs> just something. Um, back to chimpanzees, there was a chimp named after Noam Chomsky, named Nim Chimsky, um, rather famous. This the study taught him how to use sign language. And I think the, the quotations mark, the quotations are doing so much work here where it says sentence um, because he said, give orange me, give eat orange, me eat orange, give me eat orange, give me you, unquote. Noam Chomsky himself speculated that the monkey was not actually producing language, but just 
making signs that might give him a reward. Um, I think this page is rather funny. I also love Wikimedia Commons. There's so much there. Some, a, a photographer who has contributed quite a bit, to, did a lot of 360 photos. And I just wonder, you know, what the, what the purpose was for this one. It's on the Cornflakes page, but I just think it's incredible. You can interact with it too. If you're on the, the webpage, I'm, this is just a static image right now. You can do the same thing for a microwave oven with a grill. The fact that this exists just brings me joy. I can't explain it. This I think is fairly well known, the sweater curse. I think it's common in like weird Wikipedia discussions. And it's the idea that if you knit someone you love a sweater, they might break up with you. Maybe it's your third date and you're, you're, you're coming on too strong. Maybe it's the idea that your relationship's kind of dying and you think that a sweater is gonna save it. You're like, I'm at my wits end, my knits end, if you will. And maybe they just need a sweater. Um, last year, there was a there, there was a part of the article that said you could get the recipient to sign a prenuptial agreement, but alas, that detail was removed. Um, <laughs> it makes me laugh, though. Um, lots of curses. There's a rule. This is a real rule. You you can't curse Wikipedia. Do not curse the community of a Wikimedia project or target them with any malevolent hex, seal, spell, or enchantment. I saw this and I was shocked. I was like, how many curses? Can there be? Well, maybe we should be asking how many demons are there? Didn't think you could quantify that, but in 1467, someone did. Uh, he, he, he thought maybe 133 million. I think in the olden days, you could kind of say whatever you want maybe, um, but who am I to say that he's wrong? I don't have any methodology to definitively prove him wrong, I don't think. Um, before I leave you, I'll, I'll leave you not with my last words, but with the ironic last words of Richard A. Loeb, I think I'm gonna make it, he said, after being slashed 56 times with a razor in a prison fight. Quite optimistic. Um, I hope that you enjoyed some of my favorite weird snippets of Wikipedia and thank you for all that you do editing. Wow, thank you so much. <laughs> Rosie, <laughs> what do you think? What, you want some famous last words from me on what I think about them? <laughs> I think that was absolutely awesome. And it's kind of like, I want more. So for sure, I, I started following you today, Annie, and I'm going to keep up with all these great finds that you have. And maybe I'll actually pitch a few your way if I happen to see them. Well, good. I'm excited. I what think that it? I would have to post something if you suggested it because I don't think I've ever had a former Wikimedian of the Year ever suggest a post. <laughs> yeah, Wikimedian of the Year's picks. That would be great. And I think this is just a more example of like how, you know, you discover stuff all the time. You had no idea. Like until Annie mentioned, I didn't even know we had a list of last words on Wikipedia. So actually it's pretty amazing. I've never seen this list before of famous last words, which would be great to, to peruse. Um, and also, you know, the, the learning's bi-directional. So when... Annie showed me that uh, cornflakes box. I'm like, oh, did you know you can see it in 360? And I don't think even most of the Wikimedians know this. So when you post a what we call a photosphere image, you can actually put in a special template and it puts in a 360 panoramic viewer here. So in any web browser, you can click on this and boom, there you are inside the cornflakes uh, packaging. I am a cornflake. Thank you. I am the or a fly in a cornflake, which looks kind of weird there. Um, but it's probably just a, a weird node in the picture there. Um, but yeah, any kind of uh, 360 photosphere that you find in Wikimedia Commons there, you can actually click on the uh, 360 panoramic viewer. Um, and you can actually, you know, go ahead and look around any of these panoramas, which is pretty darn cool. It's kind of like, hey, I didn't know Wikipedia could be this high end. And yeah. Typically it's not. And there are people I'm who like, there are people who like live to to photograph things for Wikipedia, whether it's going around their city or or finding the the work the right wildlife. They go after the birds or or the you know the different nature of their environment. There's there's, there's quite a there's quite a, a burgeoning uh, a photography community that's like inside of Wikipedia. And they combine you know they combine Wikipedia with bicycling and and nature walks and all sorts of stuff together. And here, Annie, is your, I'm getting very claustrophobic, but this Whoa. is the same the same <laughs> shot from the 360 viewpoint here. So. It feels dangerous to be inside a microwave. I, know. I don't yeah. like it. Very, very weird. <laughs> I don't right like now. it either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so at least you know now how to uh, get that panorama shot, which is pretty cool. And I didn't the, know about this page either. The no curses <laughs> page. Look at this. The person who made, who um, put in the the microwave specified that the microwave was well used and over fifteen years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's very helpful. <laughs> I, I think this must this no curses thing I think must derive from the no legal threats uh, policy, which we have for somewhat understandable reasons, which I think was largely driven by a very particular user who uh, threatened the Sue, P Sue Wikipedia in a court of law in Trent, New Jersey, like oh, many times. <laughs> well, well, we're going to get into that later, which is hilarious. Yes, okay. that's right. The Trent, New Jersey part. I remember that. Uh, and then one last thing, which I, I, I love that you brought up the buttered cat paradox. Some folks may not know that we actually had a professional cartoonist that loved Wikipedia, and he actually spent a lot of time illustrating Wikipedia articles as a hobby. And he released these under a free license, so you can actually, uh, you know, download these from Wikipedia. And there actually is a cartoon of the butter car cat paradox, which is much easier to understand when you see the illustration, right, Andy? So. <laughs> and it's a lot safer for the cat. Yes, that's right. You don't want to illustrate this with a live demo. So uh, this is much, much more cool. And you can actually go see all of um, Greg Williams's uh, cartoons, which are here, which are awesome. So he's got things like um, uh, uh, Stephen Colbert. He's got the Beatles, all kinds of cool illustrations here. So definitely take a look at the Wiki Project Wiki World, which is the comic series that he made based on Wikipedia articles. Uh, unfortunately, he's not doing it anymore, but it was pretty cool to see all these illustrated in Wikipedia there. I think we have a, we have a guest. Such a challenge. Yeah. Yes, tell, introduce us to your, uh, your, your guest there. So. This is my cat, Pearl. I've, I'm not going to do the buttered cat um, paradox <laughs> test. She didn't be very mad at me, but she was just sitting there looking kind of lonely. Yeah, I think she knew we were talking about her. So. Uh... <laughs> Great. So this is um, a, a nice introduction to kind of your, your view of Wikipedia. But I thought one thing would be really fun is to test our audience's knowledge of Wikipedia. And uh, this is going to be uh, something that we've never really tried before at the scale. So it's all an experiment, but hopefully it'll be fun for all of you. So we have a wiki quiz for you. Now, the cool thing about this is you can either play along in a web browser if you're in front of a laptop or a desktop computer, which you can go to menti.com and then enter in that code. Or if you have a mobile, you should be able to scan in that QR code and then it'll get you to the interface right away. I'm gonna try it right now so we can see what happens. So you scan in the QR code, which I think it just pretty much gets you to the same site, menti.com. And then you should see something that says wiki quiz. So go ahead and hit the, the heart button to just signal that you're there. Like I'm tapping multiple times now. You can see the hearts going up like that. But that shows you how many unique players we have. I'd love to see this go up, up, up. Tell your wiki friends, tell your spouse or anyone that you're next to <laughs> to participate. Mm -hmm. There are 15 questions and they are a varying difficulty. And then at the very end, the last three questions they're going to be timed, meaning if you answer the question earlier than later, you get more points. And that's simply just to avoid having a tie at the end. So most of these questions, we're gonna give you quite a bit of time to kind of soak it in, um, enjoy them, and then put an answer in. And then it's gonna show you the result for each of those questions, whether you got it right or wrong, and it'll kind of keep your score as you go, which is pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna give you a few more minutes there to make sure you're in. We are starting the uh, quiz in about a minute or so. So make sure you're in there. We're getting about Prepare 28. Because some of these questions are pretty hard. Yes. Some are hard, but they're funny. So <laughs> you'll, learn, you'll definitely learn something. You're not going to get a zero. I guarantee you no one will get a zero. Uh, I'm not sure I can guarantee that. But I'd be very shocked if anyone You have to zero. try hard to get a zero. Yeah. Yeah. You have to try hard to get a zero. So. All right, so we're getting to 30. Let's see if we get the 30 folks playing, which is going to be a lot more fun if we get that. So if anyone's in a social media channel of our community, let them know. We're about to start the, the quiz. You can join after we start if you wanted to, but it's actually much more fun if you do it from the beginning. And remember, you right. can get a Wiki, Wiki Conference North America coffee mug. That's right. Let me, let me show you that mug again because that's going to uh, attract you right oh. there. 
<laughs> oh, well, we're we're having a cat convention here, so yeah, <laughs> cat not included. All right, this is, right, uh, this is Maggie May. She's oh, a yeah. cat. Got to meet her. That's awesome. Oh, great, we have thirty-three folks. This is a great crowd. All right, thirty-three. So, is it, if everyone's ready, you either scan the QR code. You should have wiki quiz on screen there. And after I hit the go button, I believe you will have a chance to put in your name. So let's go ahead and try that. All right, good. Do people have their names in there? Yeah, it's showing a whole crowd there. So you should have your name in there ready. You should see your icon in there, I think, if you have a icon on your screen. I've got a little um, bird icon, so I think I'm somewhere in there. All right, so we're going to start our first question. Hopefully, this won't be the hardest one. This will be one of the easier ones. Let's go. All correct answers get the max points. So these are not timed. You're just going to go into the game where you try to navigate from one Wikipedia article, whoops, missing, to another by clicking is called what? So what is that game called? In fact, Annie just mentioned it earlier in the, in the uh, interview here. So what is the name of the game for getting from one article to another only by clicking? Wiki linking, wiki race, wiki connectathon, wiki rabbit chase. Which one is it? Time's up. Let's see how you did. Wiki race. Good. About half the folks got wiki race. Wiki rabbit chase is not a bad. Yes. But there it is. So, <laughs> so Annie, <laughs> yeah. Annie, tell us again. You said you were introduced to Wikipedia this way. This is something you did as a kid. I'm, I'm really good at wiki racing. You click links from one random page using the hyperlinks. You can't press back and you have to go to a random destination. So maybe say you go from pickle to kitten. And you just have to click and you have your little tricks into which parts you try to find in an article to get you there. Right. So, mm -hmm. Great. So that's wiki race. Um, and we actually have people on Twitch and YouTube doing this live in front of like thousands of people, which is kind of cool. There. Crowds cheer on. It's like they put place bets in the hole. <laughs> yeah, it's like a gladiatorial bout. <laughs> All right. So there's your first question. Now, the cool thing is each question is going to show you who's in the leader position. Wow. Look at that. Nice. Awesome. All right. So our next question is going to be, again, this is not timed. Wikipedia once had a page called BJAODN, which archived bad jokes and what? Obscure daily news, other deleted nonsense, overly detailed notes, or only dangerous names. What did the ODN stand for in BJ, uh, BJAODN? I know, it's a little obscure. What does the ODN stand for? Three, two, one. Time's up. How many people got this? It's otherly nonsense. Wow, we have a lot of uh, Wikipedia veterans out there because this page no longer exists. Richard, why does this page not exist anymore? Because some people don't love fun. And also there's copy or literally there are copyright issues involved. Yeah, I mean, I got to tell you, this, this page was hilarious, but it no longer exists because technically, yes, when you copy cool stuff you found into this page or it's a copyright violation, right? You're supposed to keep all the edit history and everything. So it was deleted under those circumstances, right, Richard? Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, I think, you know, I think we should just bring back and, and make it very, very copiously documented. There should be a nice research project that should be well funded. Some graduate students should work on bad jokes and other deleted nonsense. Yeah, well, the, the, the funny thing about this was that what I enjoyed the most was not necessarily reading what's on the pages. But Annie, you'll appreciate this. If this was still around, you could do a lot with this. But this is the archive. Like, So after each page got filled, you would have to make another page to store the next set of bad jokes and other nonsense. So there was actually a whole community joke about what do you name the next page? So it was things like yet more, still more, not yet another, more bad jokes, revenge of the bad jokes and other nonsense. So there was, this thing kept going and going and going, and people would pr propose new page names. And people would actually debate this and vote on this. And it was like a whole subculture of its own on like, how do you name the community. next page? What's that? We're a consensus-driven community. Yes, consensus-driven, but it was kind of like 
funny because you didn't even care what was on the pages. You just cared about what the next name was of the overflow yeah. page. Hey, Andrew, someone's asking in a Telegram mm -hmm. channel, what's the code again for um, the Mentimeter? Oh, it's a good question. So I can put on this on the screen. That's a good point. Let me put it on the screen. There we go. Does everyone see that? Yeah. So menti.com. And then the code is that 41650211. So yeah, feel free to tap that in there. But Thanks. um but the the funny thing is, Rich, I think by is it by coincidence? Let me see. Oh, uh, I don't think it's here, but one of the ones was being sued in a court of New Jersey. Oh yeah. That was one of the <laughs> ones in there. Yeah, we had so, like we before like before the art of, 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 of vandal detecting was was a science, we had we had like special trolls who we knew by their like by their behavior patterns. So one <laughs> one was um, you know, I will sue in a court of law in Trent, New Jersey. One is was Wikipedia is communism, all capitalized. And right. one was Willie on Wheels, who would take any article right. and move it to that article on wheels. So it would be France on a wheel. <laughs> it would be Meiji Japan on wheels. Right. It would be Escher Dynamics on wheels. Because they, they discovered that this was the, the flaw that we didn't protect against vandal move page vandalism. So that was their innovation, and it, it lasted for a while. But yeah, then, as you can see, that some of the names here are homages to trolls and vandals, including the on wheels part or naming after a lawsuit. Yeah, this uh, is what Wikipedia was fun. Know, if only we could know where the on wheels person is now. <laughs> yeah, they seem to have disappeared, but I, I'm fascinated by it because he was such a problematic vandal for so long. Yeah. So cruel. Uh I like 46, walk into a bar. That's the one I'd vote for. Yeah. Or go directly to bad jokes, do not delete, do not collect other nonsense. So uh, yeah, that was that was a fun time. All right, so let's go to the next one. We have the leaderboard. Is anyone standing out in the leaderboard? Well, we've got a lot of people, folks who got that. Oh, no. Yeah, it's a crowded top of the leaderboard. Wait till we get to the last three questions. All right, so question three of 15. All of these are valid English Wikipedia articles, except for one, which is fake. Which one of these is fake? List of individual worms, list of English words containing Q not followed by U, list of trees named after historical figures, list of games that Buddha would not play. And again, we are trusting your, your good faith of not Hyper googling and looking it up in Wikipedia. We're trying to go with your your knowledge and your best guesses here. So these are the four list of individual worms, list of English words containing Q not followed by you, list of trees named after historical figures, list of games that Buddha would not play. Which one is the fake? So choose the one you think is not the real one. Believe it or not, three of these are actual articles. <laughs> Thanks to Annie. Annie chose this question. Time's up. Oh, we got. It. Oh my God, Annie! Did I tell you? <laughs> what do you say? Sorry, I made this so hard. It's <laughs> a great question. Wow. So I I told wow. Annie we we user tested this question last night just by by chance, and almost everyone chose Buddha would not play, and the Me. same thing happened. Yeah, and Rosie. Yeah. So. Believe it or not, list of games that Buddha would not play is an actual article, right? Yeah. It is. Which is just amazing. So yeah, go look it up. And for all those folks who got it wrong, um, do your penance and help improve that article. So uh, and that's maybe amazing. Help start the article about trees named after historical people. Yeah, <laughs> right? they, or, or I bet there are a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, someone asked if I am on wheels. No, I'm not. That'd be funny <laughs> if I was. <laughs> but no. Oh, uh, Diane, I'm going to single you out, but not because I want to make you feel bad, but it's, you're going to get something. You're going to get one. Don't worry. It's, it's, it's going to happen. Um, oh, someone said list of games that Buddha would not play seems like an MPOV or a neutral point of view violation. Is it really though? If he stated he wouldn't play them, then isn't that It's the Buddha's okay? POV. That he said he wouldn't play them for whatever reason. It's in this historical text. <laughs> we assume it's a valid historical text. This is astonishing, this 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 result, which it's not unexpected, but it's fascinating. All right. Let's see what the leaderboard says after this disruptive question. Do we have a shift? We do have a little bit of shift in the leaderboard there. 
So we've one person that stands out at the top. Wow. wow. God. That was a that was a disruptor, that question. <laughs> well, we got more. All right, so let's go to the next one. Question four of 15. An article called Anatel existed from for more than 10 years in Spanish Wikipedia, mm -hmm. which was found to be fake. What was this article about? A mammal discovered in Central America, a fake traditional Filipino family celebration, a town in Guatemala, or a Grammy award-winning Mexican singer. Okay, so again, this is a fake article found in Spanish Wikipedia. For 10 years it existed. What was it purported to be about? Three, four. All right, let's see what people think. Ooh, it was actually a fake Grammy award-winning Mexican singer. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. I don't know what to say. It's just, that's what it was. It was, uh, if you go to Spanish Wikipedia, that is what it has in terms of surviving 10 years, five months, four days. Each 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 language Wikipedia has like an honor roll or a roll of shame of all the hoax <laughs> articles that last the longest. Um, I, I, I'm doing really good with picking the one that's wrong that most people also think is wrong. So I'm I'm winning <laughs> while I'm losing. You're you're winning by being part of the crowd. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Too funny. These are um, good, Annie. Oh, thanks, Jim. You're always a you're always a pal. So let's go to the next one. The next one is well. Let's look at the score. It's another shakeup uh, question. Let's see what happened. Wow, it's lots of fancy animation here. Okay, wow, we have three folks at the top now. Let's go to the next question. Still lots of questions. Don't worry. Five only. Question five. All right. Let's see what would we have. Which of these English Wikipedia hoax articles lasted the longest? Which one of these lasted the longest before being detected? Eduardo Corruccio, fictitious tap dancer. Abu Alu, your booty, a fake shake. Jardo Owens, a hoax by Jared Owens. A lot of folks might have heard of that. To the Hills with the Angarad, non-existent one-man play. Which of these lasted the longest? I'll give you a hint. It was 16 years that it was around. All right, let's see what folks get. Ooh, interesting. Look at that. Wow. It was actually Eduardo Carocho, 16 years plus some months. Yeah, pretty amazing. I don't know if we have that. List of, yeah, so this is the list of hoaxes on Wikipedia. We actually have eight other languages that maintain a similar list there. Oops, we're going to do that next. So, um, surge of tap coverage and the urgent need for more tap surge experts. Surge of yeah. tap coverage, yeah. Okay, let's see where we are with the leaderboard. Ooh, some more evening at the top of the leaderboard. All right, so question six. English Wikipedia has an article titled Electrical Disruptions Caused by What Animal? termites, birds, woodpeckers, or squirrels. So English Wikipedia has an article titled Electrical Disruptions Caused by What Animal? Three of these have b wings. Okay, so let's see. I didn't realize uh, that we had only 30 seconds for this. Okay, so let's see. Termites, birds, woodpeckers, squirrels. Which one did folks choose? Ah, squirrels. Good job. So we actually only Yay. have an article on squirrels. <laughs> so. Okay, electrical disruptions caused by squirrels. There's actually a whole article here, including lots and lots of illustrations there. So that was a, a fun article to take a look at there. So this is the leaderboard after that question. Whoa, all over the place. All right, we have four folks at the top leaderboard. All right, question seven. We're not even halfway through here. What was the most edited new article of this week? 
Thanks to Annie for this one. This week, what was the most edited new article of all these four? Dancing with the Stars, American Season 30, List of People Named in the Pandora Papers, 2021 World Wrestling Championships, or Squid Game. So which of these four was the most edited new article? News article. New article? New article. I don't know. Is it new article? I guess it's not new, new article. article. Edited article. Created okay. within the week. <laughs> Ooh, we have a split between Squid Game and Pandora Papers. So it was Pandora Papers. So Annie, how did you find out about this one? There is a super fun data project, um, and it's called Weeklypedia. The duo behind Hatnote, which makes a bunch of cool Wikipedia data projects, like a list of Wikipedia, they have a project um, called Weeklypedia, and it's they'll send you an email every single Friday of the most edited articles of the week, most active discussions of the week, and most edited new articles of the week. I love it. It's a fun way to look at the news. It's like, oh yeah, that happened this week. Um, I love it so much that I met up with one of the people that created it, and we a few weeks ago went to um, the Santa Cruz boardwalk and did bumper cars. Wow. <laughs> Wait, where was this? Um, the Santa Cruz boardwalk. Oh, Santa um, Cruz. We nice. did bumper cars oh, and you. talked about Wikipedia. Awesome. That's great. So that's Stephen Laporte and folks. So. Yes. Oh, that's great. So there is, um, Squid Game and list of people named Pandora Papers. How does that affect our leaderboard? Let's see. <coughs> All right. So we have three folks at the top. All right. We're about halfway through. Let's see where we are in the sequence here. Question eight. So we have Wikipedia has created and then deleted editions for each of these artificial languages, except one. Okay, so three of these wow. were created, then deleted, except one, which one was never made. Tokipona, Siberian, Elvish, and Klingon. <laughs> All right, so which three of these were actually created, then deleted? Choose. Uh huh. So Siberian actually was created and deleted, right, Richard? Yeah. Siberian is an imaginary language. It's an imaginary <laughs> Slavic language spoken in Siberia um, that mixed some Belarusian and Ukrainian slang uh, with a lot of profanity, uh, especially in translations of Shakespeare. Um, <laughs> it was some some misbegotten micro nationalist project that um, that that bothered a lot of the people in the Russian <laughs> the Russian speaking community, and they had a difficult time. But they eventually convinced everyone else that Siberian is definitely not a real language, and it never was one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an artificial language from about two thousand five or so, and yeah. Um, I mean, there are other languages spoken in Siberia. It's just yeah. there's no Siberian. Yeah, this is this is a. I mean, this is like a, a something similar to Russian that's Siberian, as opposed to say the Turkic languages and other languages that are native to Siberia. <laughs> right, right. Okay, wow. So we only had six people get Elvish. Let's see what that does to our leaders. Oh, only one of the leaders of the last round got that one. So we are. Starting to sort through some of the folks here. All right, next one we have is question nine. An 18th century racehorse gained notoriety for his speed, but also his unusually spelled name. He was called Potatoes, but how was his name spelled? I.e., what is the name of the article in Wikipedia for this horse? Okay, I'm not going to pronounce the first one. Uh, I'm not going to pronounce any of these. This is all about the spelling, isn't it? So these are all alternative spellings for potato, possibly. But which one is actually the one that we have a Wikipedia article with the title for? Three, two, one. Choose one. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Annie, this is your fault. You chose, you chose the potatoes as the fake name in the middle. Man, I post I've posted this one multiple times. There's eight O's at the end. Potatoes. 
po to to potato, whatever that is, it's it's the one. And only three people got that one. So um, that's amazing. So let's see what that does to the leaderboard. So is that for like trademark reasons or what? I don't know. Do, do we know why? Supposedly, like a like a, I, I think it was a farmhand wrote it. Yeah, there we are. So, but to, yeah, but a, a farm oh, and it has eight help. O's. That's why. Um, How you get potato out of that though? It's because there's eight O's. Oh, oh, eight, oh, I didn't eight know that until now. <laughs> okay. Eight O's. <laughs> Okay, I, wow. Went, wow. I completely missed that. Okay, now I understand why it's eight O's. <laughs> so actually you could have figured it out by just looking at the question. I I couldn't figure it out. So fascinating. That's clever. It is clever. All right. So MXN at the top. Let's keep going. Question 10. The last two questions without timers. All right, so a famous edit conflict occurred with the article Cauliflower about what issue? Cauliflower should be deleted because it is just albino broccoli. Specifying the nutritious part is not neutral. Um, it can only be found on the island of Cyprus, or it should be call, spelled cauliflower, F-L-O-U-R. So what was the famous edit conflict that occurred over cauliflower? Hmm, Interesting. Choose one. Time's up. <clears throat> wow. A lot of people got it right. So it was a famous edit war that's been documented about whether you can call one part nutritious and the other part not nutritious. Like, whose opinion is that? Right. So that's fascinating. Okay. So great. We got 13 getting that right. No, Diane, you still haven't gotten one. Okay, we got to get Diane with one of these. Um, yikes. Okay, so let's see where our leaderboard is on this one. Still close at the top. Oh, wow. Nice game. Still very close at the top. Okay. Let's see if I have something to show you for the unusual articles. Yeah, so we actually have a very long list of unusual articles that you can glance down. I'm sure, Annie, you've been on this page quite a bit before. I have. Potatoes <laughs> is on there. Potatoes on there? Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. Question 11. Uh, actually, there's two more without timers. Okay, so. Wikipedia's most vandalized pages was created in 2005 to track articles that were a target of vandalism. Who of these five were on the initial list? Dolly Parton, Lance Bass, Leanne Rimes, Shania Twain, Elvis Presley. Who of these five were on that initial list of most vandalized pages when it was first created? <clears throat> Dolly Parton, Lance Bass, Leanne Rimes, Shania Twain, Elvis Presley. Choose one. Five seconds. Time's up. Wow. Wow. You got it, Rosie? Yeah. <laughs> I think I edited her page. Like back in, I don't know, a decade ago or so, there was like a lot happening with her, her page. Yeah, I wonder if we have any kind of veterans, the Wikipedia editing veterans that remember Leanne Rimes was the target for like a whole year of just tons of vandalism without really a great explanation why. But yeah. that was one of the reasons that page was created. So, fascinating. Well, it's amazing that she got the least number of votes, but she was the right answer, Leanne Rimes. So does that do anything to our leaderboard is the question. Did anyone get that? That could pump them to the top. No, wait, there's no, is that it? There's no movement at the top of the leaderboard. So everyone in the top 10 or 12 got that wrong. That's fascinating. Okay, so that did not move anyone on the leaderboard. Let's go to the next one, question 12. The last one before we get the timed questions where answering them faster gets you more points. All right, so this is the last one before the timer. All right. Oh, no, this is already a timer. Sorry, this is a timed question. A Substack newsletter was recently created called The Real American Hero, based on what Wikipedia content? List of Greek mythological figures, list of American breakfast foods, list of notable sandwiches, list of 
Presidents of the U.S. List of Heroes episodes. So a Substack newsletter was recently created based on what Wikipedia content for the newsletter called The Real American Hero. <laughs> All right. Giving you a lot of time, but if you answer sooner than later, you get more points. Now, this is interesting. I think this launched this past week or so. Let's see what happens. Yes, list of notable sandwiches. So actually, a lot of folks got this one. Good job. Did you get it, Rosie? Yep. Yes. Awesome. Culture. Diane, did you get it? Diane said she did not get the uh, uh -huh. the Leanne Rhymes one. So I'm trying to see. Uh, wow. Okay. So let's see if the timing made a difference for folks. So the point's going to be very different based on the time. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. So. Oh, wow. Well, I'm now in the top seven. <laughs> That's nice. So the next two questions are also time. So these are going to be not increments of a thousand. You're going to be seeing a lot of shifting around here based on how fast you can answer these questions. All right. So before we get there, this is very stressful to do the time question. So um, Diane got one. See, Diane, I told Woo! you you'd get at least one, right? See, it wasn't that hard. Well, it's pretty hard, but it's not that hard. Um, the, oh, here's an interesting thing. Maybe the Leanne Rimes vandalism was based on like rumor, like alleged affair with a married man, possibly. Um, Phoebe says she vaguely remembers the Leanne Rimes vandalism, but couldn't tell you why. So uh, that's pretty cool. So, all right. Next one. We are down to the last 13, 14. Oh, actually three more, right? Answer fast to get more points. Wikipedia has a page dedicated to what culinary masterpiece? Thank you, Annie, for this one. Ghost calzone, jello pizza, tuna smoothie, watermelon steak. So which one of these has a Wikipedia page? Speed will help here. Ghost calzone, jello pizza, tuna smoothie, watermelon steak. Ooh, wow. Ooh, that's really interesting. I didn't know Jello Pizza. What is your experience, Annie? Is that, did you find people thought Jello Pizza was a thing? No, I just made that up. And then I also <laughs> made a tuna smoothie. And I think Pearl would really like a tuna smoothie. Um, <laughs> but watermelon steak, it's a suggested alternative for vegetarians. Yeah, absolutely. You see like lots of like TikTok videos of people brushing barbecue sauce on the watermelon rind or whatever and cooking it. I have no idea um, how it could possibly taste like steak, but I have never tried it. Maybe someday I could have dishwasher salmon with a side of watermelon steak. There you go. I'm a toast sandwich. <laughs> the Wikipedia cookbook. I think you've hit on something. Yeah. Here. <laughs> All right. What does this do? 13. How fast do people answer this? Whoa. Whoa. MXN. Good job. But Rob got it fast too. Whoa. We have a crowded top of the board here. All right, two more questions. Question 14, answer fast to get more points. November 2006, an activity was effectively banned as a policy violation as a waste of server space and capacity. What were wiki editors doing? Collaborative movie screenplay writing, blind dating, exchanging cryptocurrency, playing chess, geocaching. So which of these five activities was effectively banned because it was a violation of policy? Of Wikipedia. Faster response gets higher points. This would be fascinating to see whether people got this right or not. All right, time's up. What's going on? Ooh, good job. A lot of people remembered or knew that playing chess was one of the things that was banned. Let me see if we can show you what that looks like. Um, oh, maybe. What does Wikipedia it. have in common with the Buddha? <laughs> well, um, I don't know, Phoebe, if she's in the chat, she can tell us a little bit more about this or SJ Klein, maybe. Um, but, you know, there people are using wiki pages to play chess, like saying, you know, the same way you play chess by postcard or remotely with someone else. People are 
setting up tournaments and competition trees and rounds of, and then basically someone came around and said, no, we don't do that at Wikipedia and, and uh, nominated for Miss Laney for deletion, I think, right, Richard, something. Yeah. It's very, very sad. You got something big like that. That was also the year. I think they, this, they deleted Esperanza and all the games yeah. that happened there too. So hmm. we used to have a community called Esperanza and that was run out of town as well. <laughs> too hopeful. <laughs> too much hope, too much fun. So, uh, yeah, if anyone else has any memories of Esperanza or game playing on Wikipedia before it was verboten and evicted from our community, um, yeah, 14 folks got it right. Let's look at the timing here. Whoa, very tight at the top. MXN wow. still way in front, though. That's great to see. All right. Kevin here has something to say. Watermelon is not a nutritional substitute for traditional steak. I guess it <laughs> could taste like it, but it's not going to give you the nutrition. So. Um, Are you serious? Oh, no. <laughs> I think the protein value of watermelon is not going to really impress hey, everyone. Hey, Kevin, citation needed on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it seems like overly point of view. Wait, don't you see the smiley? That's that's the citation right there. So. We should bring chess back, says Kevin, too. So. Wait, so Phoebe says there actually have been collaborative movie scores that Wikipedia has written. Is that true? Wow. Oh, sc movie scores, maybe not screenplays. But yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, congratulations, Robles. You're on, the, you're on the leaderboard. You're the donut. Very good. All right. I think we have how many questions? We're getting very... Oh, this last one. That's so sad. Oh, no. But this could be the differentiator. 15... If Wikipedia's words were printed in the style of Encyclopedia Britannica, how many volumes would be necessary? 37, 491, 2980, or 42,196? How many volumes would be necessary if they were printed, the words only, in the style of Encyclopedia Britannica? This is the closest guess. All right, see if you get the order of magnitude right. Whoa, good. People guessed on the right scale, at least. But um, it was actually 2,980. I think this is Michael Mandeberg's project, right, Richard? Yeah, it was a, it was a, you know, it was an art, it was an art project. There were um, a bunch of books printed out, and then there was sort of, uh, then there was some space on the wall, like left <laughs> where the books would go, because there were quite a few of them, and they were sort of, uh, some of them were auctioned off. It was, it was an art project, but it was a nice, it was a nice illustration of you know how much physical space does wikipedia take and it's not as perhaps and when you see it in person it's not as much as you might think um or at yeah. least at the time it's kind of a bigger sense but yeah you're right and and this is kind of just a general breakdown not that the scale of this bookcase is right but the proportion of like what is history what is geography what is biography is quite interesting um yeah pretty cool and let's see what this does to the leaderboard though what do we get? MXN still up there? Yes. A little bit of shift. MXN, congratulations. Yeah. That was impressive. Wow. You were up, up there consistently, which is amazing. So you get in touch with us somehow, and uh, we will get you that mug. Right, Richard? So yes, we will get you that this wonderful mug, which will prove your wiki bona fides and your um, <laughs> virtual, uh, uh, capacity. And you also, and but people in the audience can also get their own mugs if they want. Um, that's true. I mean, there's nothing stopping as well as their t-shirts. <laughs> it's only ten bucks. I think that's a great deal, considering yeah. other folks like are charging like 15, 20 bucks. Uh, for it's that. not a profit and, center. <laughs> and you can actually buy last year's Wiki Conference North America yeah. t-shirt if you want. In case as you well. missed it, I just bought one. I just I bought one last week because. I was sad I forgot the letter last time. Yeah. I, I don't think I bought one last year for whatever reason. Well, we did it on such short notice last year, right? Like yeah. three weeks planning. So I think I've got some catching up to do with T-shirts. And for sure, I want that mug. <laughs> yeah, I think I want all those things. So I think um, Annie needs one of those mugs. So when she's doing her TikTok, she can just yes. kind of like hold it up and <laughs> yeah, everybody will be like, hey, where'd you get that? Yeah, Annie, we got to get you a lot more wiki merch. 
So uh, the best is the um, the one that's a picture of dinosaurs and it says dinosaurs live on Wikipedia. That's my mm -hmm. personal favorite. Although I do oh, also nice. like the Wiki Compass North America. Awesome. Dinosaurs well, congratulations, everyone who played MXN. You're at the top of the heap. I don't know if we do anything else other than show this. So we got Albany, New York, Rob, Hamas, God, Jorge, five ten. SDKB, Paula, Karen Joyce, Slowbro, Phil Gretchen. So congratulations, all of you folks. Hopefully you had fun. This is one of the weirder trivia question, uh, quizzes we've ever given. I don't think we've ever had something this wide-ranging. We could not have done it without Annie's insights into this. Um, we have some leftover questions, so Annie, we should do this again. It'd be kind of fun to, to try it. Yeah, maybe we should promise to make it a little bit easier. <laughs> <laughs> well, Diane did get one in the end. I think one, Diane, I hope. They're very, yeah. We, 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 yeah, we, we, I mean, like, there were a remarkable number of questions where the right answer got the least number of, of yes. uh, votes. So that was, that was. I mean, I guess it was, it's good if you're doing the, the Sunday, New York, Sunday New York Times crossword, but uh <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what you want for. Well, thrill yeah, time for everyone. Woo! <laughs> Yay! No matter how you did. That's a cheating challenge. <laughs> oh, so Diane got two in the end. See, Diane, you got two. That was uh, that was perfect. Um, I did not realize potato was actually guessable if you looked at the eight O's. So that was uh, eight O's. That was good. I did not realize it. Um, no, we're, um, someone said, are we all part of Mensa? No, we just spend way too much time on Wikipedia. <laughs> that's that's the only explanation that makes sense here. So. Someone said, okay, harder is better. Cruel jokes are good jokes. Okay, well, that's one way of looking at it. <laughs> but I think another thing that's valuable, Annie, is like, are you taking requests? Like, since we have a very veteran crew of Wikipedia type folks here, um, I'm I, sh I think they should let you know anything they think is quirky and notable for your social media feed. So if for you think sure. there's something that Annie should be looking at, send them through. We'd love to. For sure. Send me a direct message or contact me, however. <laughs> Sounds good. And uh, just to recap for folks there, let me bring it up on screen. So again, Annie's at Depths of Wikipedia um, and at TikTok here. If you're a TikTok user. And then what other platforms are you on? You also have a link tree of stuff as well, right? Yeah, there's a bunch of random stuff in there. Um, let me think. I have a newsletter. It's not just Wikipedia, but it's trivia about different topics. I was inspired by the dips and the toasts of the world, so I made a graphic. So that's what you're looking at right there. Um, yeah, you have your own merch. Look at that. Yeah. So cool. Dips of the world. Yeah, but do you have a mug? I do have a mug, but not at school. My favorite, so the best selling one is the first one, the cow lying on her side, and it's from the um, cow tipping article. And that's my favorite. It's a cow lying on her side is not immobilized. She can rise whenever she chooses. That's the caption. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I remember during, especially during early quarantine, I felt like it was too relatable. <laughs> And this was supposed to be something around like how cow tipping was an urban legend, right? There's no real cow tipping. Or... I, you can look at the article. I don't know. Okay. It's quite controversial, I believe. Is it still controversial? Because I remember like looking at this post in your, in your feed, and then there's people debating in your comments about whether <laughs> cow tipping was real or not. And there was people convinced it was a hoax, but. Yeah, it says generally considered an urgent legend. Personally, my uncle says that he went cow tipping. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's really. It's always your uncle that says yeah. he's done. <laughs> I can't prove it, right? <laughs> yeah, your uncle, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we got cool merch. I I don't know of any other folks outside of our community that kind of print Wikipedia articles on the side of mugs. So this is pretty cool. So, but tell us what this was. I couldn't figure it out from the angle here. What is the buffalo chart mug? Okay, so the angle you get on that like mock up from the distribution company isn't great. So you should go mm -hmm. to Buffalo, 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 Buffalo on Wikipedia. And oh, somebody okay. made a graphic um, to help people understand how <laughs> Buffalo eight times in a row is is a grammatic correct sentence. I, I think it's it, I, the last time I checked it was still there. Yeah, 
Oh, um, yeah. The idea is that Buffalo from Buffalo, New York, Buffalo, it's in them for bully. They bully the Buffalo, that Buffalo from Buffalo, New York, bu Buffalo. Um, I think that's what it means. But the graphic, personally, I think it's hilarious because it doesn't help at all. It made me a little more confused, but I'm yeah, right. funny that someone read it. <laughs> I mean, they could have at least gotten upstate New York to look better, but it's like <laughs> Rochester. Why? Yeah, why would they bring Rochester into it? <laughs> yeah, why, why Rochester? Because it's another it's another city in upstate New York. I guess. <laughs> wow. By Lenny Tallarico. Interesting. Let, let's let's have them as the guests on Wikipedia Weekly to explain this diagram. And he's got a red blink page, so he's not. Has, has no user page, so that's kind of interesting. So. Own work, 2017, so that was relatively recent. So I don't know. Let's see. Oh, my God. So there's only two wow. edits. Here. What was the other contribution? Wow. Uh, the diagram of another oh. diagram. Well, it's this okay. diagram and this. Oh, it's the <laughs> sentence diagram and well, I guess they're the same type of image, but that's all he did. They maybe... came to Wikipedia for one thing and one thing only. Yeah, exactly. diagram. <laughs> the world needs it. Yeah. That's that's his uh he made a mark in the universe through that. So that's pretty awesome. Now the funny thing is can we give him a, a wiki love? Let's see. Use your contributions. No, there's no wiki love. Hmm. Anyway, that is fascinating to see that this person spent all that time on Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo diagram. So, wow. All right. So any other questions from folks in the audience? Otherwise, we are done with our trivia. Let's see. Um, hope he's not a sock puppet. No, well, doesn't seem to be a sock puppet, but uh, let's see. There's anything else here? Uh, there's a good question here. Do we all work for Wikipedia? No, I don't think any of us work for Wikipedia on this call, at least, right? So we're all volunteers or work in some other capacity. All right. So let's see. We will keep an eye on you on Depth Wikipedia. If you're on TikTok, I highly recommend <laughs> Andy's TikTok content. It is hitting on a whole nother scale. Right, like in terms of like nine million views and the million likes, that's kind of crazy. So I hope you're getting a creators fund compensation at some point. So. A little bit. Okay. It's not that's great, good. but <laughs> it's not a lot. It's better than nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, uh, we want you back again if we can do this with another round of trivia. That'd be fun. I, mean, I would love to, and I'm going to be asking you all my editing questions because I am always running into questions. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know if we mentioned it at the top, but you might have mentioned it very quickly, but you have been to an edit a thon before, right? I hosted yeah. one with Wikimedia NYC. Really, I marketed it and um, a bunch of volunteers came. Some people in the chat might have been there. It was virtual and there hadn't been a lot of virtual edit a thons. So we did we did it through Discord. Um, it was really fun. So yeah. Yeah, it was a great experience. It was great to get your, you know, sort of your wiki fans come in and get a taste of, of editing. A lot of new editors, a lot of yeah. young editors. So it's fun. That's great. That's great. That's what we're looking for. So. Well, All let right. us know when you do another one of those. <laughs> I would love to, and I would love your help. So hopefully we can put something together. Yeah. And if you can like rope in any of your folks who are, you know, uh, in your region or reach out to your network uh, and we can find some theme that might be, you know, fun for different crowds, we can do something like that. That'd be great. That'd be great. We had a couple hundred um, sign up last time. And I'm oh. sure this time we could get more. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks so much. And folks who are out there, thanks for taking part in the first ever Wikipedia Weekly Trivia. I hope you found it fun. We'll try to do another one soon with some not so hard questions or a better range of <laughs> answerable questions. And uh, Feel free to subscribe to the channel. We actually have a lot of content um, on the Wikipedia Weekly channel, not only from us who do these kinds of shows, but we have folks from 
from Africa, from the Caribbean, from where else, Richard? All over the world. Right? We did a show Sweden. across Asia. We have, yeah, we have quite a bit of Swedish content. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sweden. And then we actually have a lot of videos from our Wikimania conference, which is the international yeah. annual conference. We probably have like 30 to 50 videos of folks talking about their Wikipedia work there. So take a look. Maybe some Wikidata ones too. Yes. So talking about some of our newest projects like Wikidata. Wikidata ones. There's some, you know, people going through like Irish history. Anything could be there. <laughs> Different aspects. Absolutely. Biology, et cetera. Great. So yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, keep in touch with the channel here on YouTube. You can hit the subscribe or the bell icon to be notified of anything that comes up. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Wikipedia Weekly Network. Thanks. All right. Take care, everyone. Thanks.